life. I will say this about investing. Everything you do learn is cumulative. What I learned at 20 is useful. Welcome to another episode of Equity Mates, a podcast that follows our journey of investing. Whether you're an absolute beginner or approaching Warren Buffett status, our aim is to help break down your barriers from beginning to dividend. My name is Bryce, and as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you going? I'm very good, Bryce. Excited for this episode. Reporting season is over. The, it feels like there's a weight off my shoulder. We can talk about something else. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's get into it. We have a big show coming up today. I'm going to kick off with what we've learned this week. Um, quick chat about the Bucks, of course. Uh, everyone's hanging on. Yeah, what did you learn at the Bucks? What I learned at the so Bucks. So much investing chat at the Bucks. God, Bryce wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> and then we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on Warner Brothers Discovery. Yes. Uh, the we're going to talk about building an investment thesis and build both the bull and the bear case. Yes. So just a reminder before we start, we're not experts. We're not financial professionals. We're not licensed. We are here just learning like you and nothing on this podcast should be taken as advice. Now, Ren, uh, 33 days until FinFest, which is proudly po- powered by stake. We cannot wait. The news here is that first release tickets are running out. Yes. They're currently at 47 bucks. This is an investing and finance show. You always want to be looking for a bit of additional money to yeah. get in the markets. So get them quick before they uh, get jacked up to the second release of $67. It's uh, going to be first in best dress for those on the day to grab some awesome merch that is uh, that is going to be available. And if you're interested in the program and uh, speaker lineup, it's available at equitymates.com slash FinFest. We have over 50 experts from around Australia, plenty of sessions to cover all level of investor. Now, Equity Mates, Bryce mentioned merch. Uh, when I first met him back at university, he was starting a sunglasses business, Summer Days. Yes. D-A-Y-Z-E. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deep, uh, yeah. And uh, he's bringing back the sunglasses at FinFest. If we, if supply chain issues don't erupt, yes. uh, Bryce is going to have Equity Mates branded sunglasses at FinFest. Free, free of charge. Free? Free of charge, oh, Equity Mates. Oh, hell yeah. We're going to, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. We're going to, we're going to be dressed like some of the best in the business. That's for sure. So if you want to grab your merch pack, not only from Equity Mates, but from some of the other uh, sponsors, such as our majors, Weno, Magellan and CoinSpot. Thank you to those guys for uh, being major sponsors. They're all going to have some pretty epic mm. merch as well. And people have probably seen Stakes merch on Instagram. Rumors are they'll be uh, there out in force. Yes. So even if you don't want to hear any of the speakers, even if you just want to get a goodie bag, um, worth that, it. That's it. Worth oh, it. All right, Bryce. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. Uh, we want to uh, keep going with this What We Learned This Week segment. Uh, the week was dominated by your bucks. It was. Probably not a lot of learning. Uh, I had a great time. Learn a lot about you. Yes. Learn about uh, your poor golf skills. <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> nah, hey, hey, hey. I already knew that. What am I saying? <laughs> now, nah, what did you learn? Um, look, I learned that. Uh, so we went down to Barn Burgle for three days down in Tasmania and played two rounds of golf. Third best golf course in Australia. Something I learned. Like that. That's what I yes, learned. This that's week. what you learned. Uh, it was phenomenal. Had an awesome time. Um, learned that you can have a box without getting too ridiculous. Um, we had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. I, I loved it. Um, played two games of golf, watched plenty of footy. We were treated, so much sport. Treated to an awesome round, uh, AFL uh, finals round, and also the Wallabies who didn't get up. But anyway, it was it was awesome. Shout out to Jeffrey, the uh, yes. bartender at the sports bar. <laughs> Shout out to Jeffrey. Uh, I learned that you can make friends with bartenders at sports bars. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, let's, let's go back to investing. Um, you've got something here that you did learn something investing related. So what did you learn? It continues to surprise me how uh, the power of social media and having a massive following leads to just doors opening in terms of investment opportunities and building businesses. Uh, I watched the, uh, the documentary you recommended with Ryan, um, Reynolds, Reynolds, and, and, buy, and yeah, yeah, and buying Wexham over yeah. in Wales, a soccer club, and one of their whole parts of that is having a massive social following, and they can bring, um, you know, uh, exposure to the club. Yeah. And it came out at the time of recording that Kim Kardashian is now going into private equity in, okay. in partnership with uh, a former Carlisle partner. His name's Jay Sammons. Okay, and they're launching their own private equity fund leveraging the size of Kim Kardashian's social media account. Okay. And so they, they're going to be um, 
investing in media companies, skincare, all that sort of stuff. She already has a clothing company worth $3.2 billion. Yes, Skims. Skims, yes. And so this is just a, a reminder that I personally and you personally, Ren, need to get our social media accounts up there so we can start la- launching side ventures. So let me ask you this then. If Kim Kardashian knocked on our door here at Equity Mates, would you take the Kim Kardashian buyer? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's focusing on media businesses. So, I mean, yeah, this is great for us. But it's it fascinates me um, that, you know, a, a former private equity guy, Jay, who worked at Carlisle, now teaming up. Um, it, it fascinates you that someone <laughs> wants to work with a celebrity? That might be the least fascinating thing. <laughs> well, no, no. His sole reason, well, not sole reason, but his driver was that she's just got a massive account. So it makes the investments that they take, Let's it, then they just put the might of however many millions of followers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ashton Kutcher, of all people, was the pioneer of this in the venture world. And so many celebrities have really followed since. But he, remember how he had the biggest Twitter account for a while? Mm-hmm. Um and he used that and then went to all these hot um, VC rounds and said, let me invest, but give me a discount on the round mm. because of my profile. And he got discount access to like, I want to say Airbnb and a couple of other big names um, in that sort of early 2010s period, just because he had such a big platform. And then that, then we, that's when we saw like all the sports stars, mm. you know, like the Golden State Warriors who were in San Fran, they were all became VCs in their own right. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and then... It's gone on from there. Mm. Serena Williams is a VC now. Yes, yeah. Um, Just using profile. So the next investor in Equity Mates needs to have over 100 million followers. Or Equity Mates needs 100. <laughs> yeah, or Equity Mates needs <laughs> 100 million. Price, raise your ambitions. <laughs> anyway, anyway, if you're interested in the story, check it out. Kim Kardashian uh, has teamed up with um, we'll, we'll do something, Jay Salmon. We'll do something about that on the dive. Sasha's actually already messaged the group with it. So okay, um, nice. head over to the dives. Uh, Instagram, oh, Dive's podcast and you Check can it listen out. to that. Well, Ren, what have you learned? So, uh, Commonwealth Bank, this is a message to you. Your spend tracking on your app sucks. Yes. <laughs> now, I have always been a bit of a vibe guy when it comes to tracking my spending, but this market downturn is such a big opportunity that I figured now's the right time to like squeeze every penny, get more money into the market. I sold my car. <laughs> there's a there's a bit of a backstory there, but the, it kind of ruins the, the headline, which is I sold my car to get liquidity. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, when I tried to categorize my spending on Commonwealth Bank, they have these broad, unhelpful categories. You can't add your own category. You can't add your own subcategories. And it just, it was a mess. Like we, tr- we bought a bunch of booze for the bucks and my choices to categorize it were groceries, shopping, or like entertainment. Mm, no why, good. Why can't I make my own category alcohol mm. and then see how much I'm spending? Or Uber Eats. Anyway, we did a whole episode on saving to invest, tracking your spending on Get Started Investing. But in case anyone from ComBank is listening here, yeah. you have 50,000 headcount. You have half a trillion dollar mortgage book. <laughs> you power half the retail investors in Australia. Surely the might of your company can be turned to add your own category or rename your a category. <laughs> Maybe they don't want you to, Ren. Maybe they anyway, don't want you to. Anyway, that's my appeal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's what I've learned. Good learning. Well, let's um, let's move to the meat of this episode. And over the last couple of weeks, Ren, uh, we've had two major TV show premieres. We've had The House of the Dragon, which was the Game of Thrones prequel. Yep. And we've had The Rings of Power which was the Lord of the Rings prequel as well. Yep. One on Amazon Prime and the second over on HBO. Yep. And uh, man, it's been a great couple of weeks. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. And we haven't been thinking about investing, so let's do our <laughs> recaps of the show. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> nah, so Amazon Prime, everyone knows. We've spoken about Amazon way too much. Every, media talks about Amazon way too much. There, there wasn't really an interesting story there. But the owner of HBO Max is a company that was only created in April of this year, Warner Brothers Discovery. And there's an interesting conversation to be had about this company. I think it gives us some indication of where the streaming world is going. But we wanted to take this company, talk about it, because we haven't spoken about, about it on the show before, and then build it two theses. Do both sides this company, build a bull case and build a 
build a bear case to I guess sort of show how we would think about building a thesis. Mm. So mm. let's start with the company, Warner Brothers Discovery, Bryce. Um, it only started in April this year, but Warner Brothers has been around since the 1920s. It has been kicking around for a while, Ren, and you're right, only been around after the merge of two uh, slowly dying cable TV channels, Warner Brothers and Discovery. Hence why we're at Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. So <laughs> the, these guys were titans of cable TV, you're mm. right. Warner Brothers, so take a step back, Hollywood royalty, um, started in the 1920s. Uh, made the first ever movie with talking. That's mm-hmm. a little trivia fact for you. Uh, they own the DC Comics franchise, yep. Superman, Batman, <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, massive IP from our childhoods. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Mm. They own a number of cable channels, HBO, CNN, TBS, TNT. Yep. Um, they love a three-letter acronym. Uh, and they operate two streaming services, HBO Max and the very, very short-lived CNN, CNN Plus. Plus. Yeah. And then you've got Discovery on the other side, Ren, which was a giant in factual entertainment. Plenty of good docos over on Discovery. They operated a number of lifestyle channels, Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, Science Channel, TLC, The Food Network, HGTV, not sure what that one was, and then Travel Channel. Yeah. HGTV. Maybe it gives me infomercial vibes for some reason. Maybe, but maybe, that, <laughs> maybe it's like Home and Gardens TV. And then they. Should uh, we keep speculating? <laughs> then they had a, a streaming channel as well, or a streaming service, sorry, Discovery Plus. But in um, April, ATT spun out Warner Brothers and uh, Warner merged with Discovery, getting us to this point now, which is Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, so AT&T shareholders own 71% of the company. Discovery shareholders own 29% of the company, but it is now a streaming giant, I guess. It's a media conglomerate that is making the transition from Mm. the world of cable channels to the world of streaming. Mm. They've got four main revenue segments. The cable cable TV is still meaningful for them, although cord cutting is increasing like the rate of cord cutting is increasing um but tv from cable subscription and advertising streaming um they did quickly shut down cnn plus there's a whole story in that but they do continue to operate two other streaming services discovery plus and hbo max and i don't know where you sit on on that but hbo for me is by far and away the best producer of tv shows 100 percent. yeah great yeah okay. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of their ip later showtime is also up there but yeah hbo is so good yeah. but that that is like a that is the lukewarmest of lukewarm takes i know that's yeah like everyone agrees that yeah. hbo is the best i yeah. wonder why they're the best though like is it the people in that building must be because like surely just netflix they just, and they disney just create, are trying to poach just those create people. awesome shows anyway let's keep going yeah anyway uh so, so TV is number one, streaming number two. They license content to other media businesses, game studios. Classic example of that would be if us sitting here in Australia, we can't sign up to HBO Max. Mm. We sign up to Binge yep. that has all of HBO Max's content. That would be, there would be some licensing deal there. So that's number three. And then number four, um, they own some movies or they send, they send some of their stuff to movies. I actually don't think they own any movie cinemas. But no, but they make box office. Make box Despite office stuff. Superman, etc. There's a whole side note about how they pulled a bunch of stuff off their streaming services, but and to try and push it back into box office. But anyway, you've got some details on the competitors. Yeah. And importantly for this conversation, how they measure up with some streaming so, subscribers yeah so quick recap of uh of the competitive landscape so warner brothers have a market cap of about 30 billion and 92 million subs across everything that we just went through there but then you've got disney netflix and paramount we, oh, i don't actually have amazon prime here either so we've got disney with a market cap of 205 billion so much much larger than warner brothers and they have 152 million subscribers so just just under um double Warner Brothers, Netflix, market cap of about 100 billion and 220 million subscribers. They lead the way in that space. And then Paramount, they're the smallest of them all with a market cap of about 15 billion and only 64 million subscribers. Um, So Warner Brothers, not the smallest. Uh, In terms of market cap v subs, doing pretty well for themselves. Yeah, now they're, they're like the pure play competitors. So that's a really sort of clean look at market cap and subs. 
Disney obviously have like a parks business and an yeah. entertainment business, but that gives you a pretty good idea. Um, some of the other competitors, so Amazon has about 200 million subscribers, uh, and but they have a $1.3 trillion market. Yeah. Yet. But and then they have a web services business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube, that they don't have a lot of subs, like 23 million, I think, is their number. They expect to get like to 25 million subscribers. Um, Apple TV. I, I feel this is a vibe. This is pure vibe. But I feel like Apple TV has been a bit of a flop. Maybe. What do you reckon? We pay for it, but I just don't don't really know what we use it for. Anyway, let's- The Apple let's... TV box, like that, again, Apple nail electronics, oh, yeah. like yeah. hardware. That's good. That's epic. Yeah. But the streaming service, mm. like the content creation business- mm. Don't need it. Uh, yeah, I think we pay for it as a house as well. Apparently, they have 40 million, according to Barron's, but they don't split it out, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay, so they've got plenty of franchises as well within Warner Brothers. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I actually, um, they, they do. I In our doc, I screenshotted something from uh, their company presentation. Which one of these doesn't seem to fit? I know. So <laughs> in their, in their um, franchises, they, they called out something like their big IP. Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman... Uh, Shark Week, Game of Thrones, 90 Day Fiance Universe, and Harry Potter. <laughs> Shark Week. <laughs> no, Shark Week's big. Like, dis- that's Discovery's, like... It's big thing. I'm just looking at it now. 40 million viewers in the week. What, what the hell is Massive. the 90 Day Fiance Universe? Oh, universe suggests that there's, like, a whole world of IP out there. <laughs> true, true. Uh, there was someone who just needed to, like... Uh, Fit fill something the in. slide. Yeah, it feels fit something in. <laughs> I mean, like, Lord of the Rings could have gone there. They could have. True. Uh, yeah, anyway, so let's just um, take stock, Ren. So we've had a merger between Warner Brothers and Discovery to form Warner Brothers Discovery uh, after being spun out from AT&T. They've got a, a f- four main revenue streams and are in a pretty competitive landscape at the moment, as we know, and we've spoken about a number of times on the show. So then it comes down to, well, how do we formulate an investment thesis? What's the bull case and what's the bear case for a company like Warner Brothers? Now, Ren, before we jump into the bull and bear case, Case, I want to give a quick shout out to the new Equity Mates Community Forum. Yes. We are off, well, we are no longer engaging as much as we did in our Facebook community group. Facebook is not great for engaging curated conversation. We have built our own forum. Mm. It is now available on the website equitymates.com. Think of it as Reddit, but for Equity Mates. Yeah. That's it. Th- yeah. That, think of it like that. Um, but look, yeah, as Bryce said, the conversation became a little bit unstructured as you scale a Facebook group because it's difficult to search previous questions. So people often ask the same questions. But it's also like there are people of very different investment levels in the same group. And some people want to talk about, you know, the net present value of Apple's cash flows and other people want to ask what broker to sign up with and those two conversations don't sit well together in a forum Uh, so this forum gives us a chance to structure conversations but the most exciting thing for me as the person that has to go through and weed out the bots there are no bots (laughs) there are no bots yet there are no bots so look you're going to hear us chatting about it over the next few months Um, it's an awesome place to be at the moment we're looking it's now open for for our entire community to come and join so head to equitymates.com create create an account and uh, crack in here's one tease if we haven't sold it to you yet an expert investor we just interviewed told us about a free book his book recommendation was free he told us where to get it I'll share that on the forum Nice. So, if you want a free expert recommended book, come jump across to the forum. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Ren. Well, let's take a look at the bull case for Warner Brothers Discovery. And we've titled it, This is the Next, Perhaps Better, Disney. Yes. All right. <laughs> dun, so, dun. now, important to keep in mind as we talk about these cases, we're doing both a bull and a bear case. So, don't switch the podcast <laughs> off halfway through this segment and then go and buy yes. because also don't take in- investing recommendations from a podcast. That's it. But we were taking a look at Warner, Bro- uh, Warner Brothers Disney and we wanted to sort of, I guess, show how we would go about starting to build a thesis on both sides of the debate. So... Bryce, this is the next perhaps better Disney. And so Warner Brothers is making the transition from cable to direct-to-consumer 
streaming. And there will be challenges, there will be costs in that transition. But beyond that, once they get through that valley, there is so much upside and plenty of free cash flow to be had. They have this incredible asset base. D- the DC Comics universe, all of those superheroes, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. The challenge is to emulate what Disney do. Which is what? Which we've called extend their IP. Now, you're a big fan of Disney. Um, not investment of that. <laughs> now, you, you speak about Disney a lot. So, mm. talk to me about the Disney business model. Well, as you said, Ren, it is all about extending their IP. So, let's use Mickey Mouse as, as an example. They've created an incredibly strong IP in Mickey Mouse. Yes. Or, they, or they go out and buy it like Star Wars. Yep. And then they take that and spread it everywhere and monetize it in as many different ways as possible. They have theme parks. They've got Disneyland. They've got Mickey Mouse walking around in, you know, a, a bloody mascot. We get, we get what yeah. theme parks are. <laughs> <laughs> they have shows, Disney on Ice. They have merch. They have, you name it, they will leverage that IP in as many different ways as possible. They literally have cruises. You True, can go cruises. on a Disney cruise yes. and be surrounded by Disney characters. Yeah, so that that's an awesome example of um, taking strong IP and um, and leveraging it in many in many different revenue streams as possible. Yeah, that's what Disney are best in class at. Mm. Yeah, mm. and the the argument would be, well, this is Warner Brothers' opportunity as well. They have incredible, powerful incredibly powerful ip here's the number for you this year emmy nominations have come out warner brothers discovery won the most 193 emmy nominations wow feels like a lot i couldn't tell if that i couldn't find if that was a record or not feels Uh, like it well i guess i would have been able to find it if it was a record so but 193 emmy nominations and bryce to back up your argument about hbo Mm mm-hmm 140 of them from HBO. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, point point proven. So, I guess imagine... <laughs> next. <laughs> so, I guess like imagine a Warner Brothers world with Superman, Batman, Harry Potter. Game that- of Thrones, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these epic worlds, which are, in, in some instances they do extend all this, but they don't have that. Well, yeah, they do. They're in on the Gold Coast, movie world. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> Um, who, who goes to movie world? Is it even open? Well, it was. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep I, don't, going. They don't, I don't think they own it though. I, I imagine they would have licensed it because isn't it owned by like um, Village, um, Village Roadshow or something? Something like that. Yeah. But Bryce, when we were talking about extending the IP mm. and building the bull case mm-hmm. for Warner Brothers, Disney, two kids focused. Well, I don't think it's- two kids focus, but they just are kids focused. <laughs> yeah. No, well, <laughs> like in, building, in building the case for Warner Brothers, that's what you would say. Two kids focus. <laughs> kids don't True. have disposable no. income. Yeah, you'd know you'd like, say- How powerful is you'd say power? adult opportunity. <laughs> sure, you For Warner that. Brothers yeah. or Disney have an opportunity to go in adults if we're True. building the bill, well, bill case. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, <laughs> anyway let's very kids focused. focused. What do you mean by kids focused? Like all their IP, their parks, their cruises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's driven by the kid. Mickey, Star Wars, mm, Pixar, mm, like mm. they're incredible IP, but the the IP is focused on kids. Yes. Now, kids is a massive advantage because parents are willing to spend a lot of money on their kids. Kids Oops. don't understand the value of a dollar, so they'll pester you into paying $15 a day to yeah. skip one line at a theme park or yep. to go to Florida to go to a theme park in the first place. Pester power is incredible. You can sell a lot more merch like toys and stuff like that. So like Disney have a good strategy. They're a good company. Mm. But it's the interesting conversation with Warner Brothers is all their adult facing IP, all their adult facing content. Like what are their opportunities there that are different to Disney? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't have an answer, but I'm just thinking that your, your appetite, the older and older you get, like you have to be very creative in how you extend the IP. Yeah, well, business isn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. Anyway, we've but, got we've got some other examples of shows here, all of which I'm looking at, and I've loved all of them. Curb Your Enthusiasm, Band of Brothers, True Detective, Sopranos, Game of Thrones, Succession. Yeah, like they are all epic shows. And we could have kept <laughs> listing, but we just figured like you guys you get know it. what HBO does. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're pretty good. Uh, so this is just a very high level 
understanding of building a thesis, Ren, obviously if you were going to do this properly, you'd think about other things like management, you'd look at balance sheet, you'd look at the competitive landscape in a bit more detail. But th this is just one sort of way that you could approach it and look at what, what is their growth opportunity in, and you know they've got a, a large bank of assets here. Yeah, well- what, what, what can they do with it? Yeah, so just, just to close out the adult conversation, I have some ideas. <laughs> no, 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 let's- So <laughs> like stage shows, like Harry Potter had the stage show knockoff you could do something like that with some of these things the sopranos on ice <laughs> this is my uh, thing though like the no, hold on i've got more <laughs> spin-off movies so all these tv shows like where's the i mean uh, hbo did an entourage movie not great but like where's the true detective movie mm -hmm. the sopranos movie that the succession movie like mm -hmm. there's a bunch of money to be made there video games warner brothers have a video game studio how can I play as Wyatt Roy and the Succession video game? <laughs> Roy uh, Wyatt. Bo it? Board game? Oh, yeah. R Wyatt no, Roy. What did yeah, I say? Roy. Yeah, Wyatt then Roy. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> His surname's Roy. <laughs> um, video, so, video games are board games. Yeah, yeah. Monopoly, Succession Monopoly. Yeah. Like, where's that at? <laughs> um, themed bars. Good one. Yeah. That's better. I like, like that. Curb Your Enthusiasm theme bar. Or like in the latest season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry mm -hmm. starts a, like a spike coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Knock a few of those up around <laughs> LA. Like, okay. let's get that going. <laughs> let's go. And my last question to you, Bryce. What does an adult theme park look like? Not fun for me. <laughs> yeah. What about... No, it, it no. Enough. Think about like golf simulator driving range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other things that I can't think <laughs> themed of. Themed bars. No, because Monopoly. it's like when we think of theme parks, is we they've been optimized for kids. Yeah, yeah. No, but like I what's get that. like what's imagine where we could have gone at the Warner Brothers Bucks Party theme park. <laughs> it would have been a no for me. <laughs> anyway, that's a few free ideas for Warner Brothers. But then I guess I guess the the serious part of this conversation is um, to your point about this is the start of a thesis. Then it's what does that revenue look like? Mm. What does that cost line look like? Mm. You you would probably look at like a Netflix to take the streaming business and model out those costs, content costs, platform costs. You'd probably then look at a Disney to take out the extending the IP business, their parks, stuff like that, what the cost and um, revenue looks like there. Then you model that out for a number of years and then you discount the future cash flow back to the present value and you've also and got, that's the hard you've, part you've also <laughs> got to have some indication that they are going to do something like this yeah yeah you like, can't just, you can't just be like yeah <laughs> you can't just be like they're gonna create adult theme parks and this is my valuation <laughs> well that's when you become an activist investor you buy five percent of the company you write an open letter to the board and you say if yeah. you don't do it i'm gonna cause I'm out, trouble <laughs> I'm out. well let's turn to the to the bear case Ren. before we do there is a clear and obvious rebuttal to the bull case that I think it is important to say, which is that Warner Brothers has had multiple opportunities to do this, this extend your IP. Like they've had this epic IP for ages. Mm. They own DC Comics mm. since 1969. Mm. They own Six Flags, so that massive chain of amusement parks in America up until 1998. Um, they've had this opportunity and they haven't executed it. So my challenge with the bull case is why is now different why is this latest merger going to spark the opportunity that didn't spark when AT&T owned them or when they merged with AOL mm. that wasn't a great period for them <laughs> or like any of the previous iterations of Warner Brothers they never really became the Disney yeah what's what's what stopped different them? now yeah and so that's when you talk about management and stuff like that well that brings us to the bear case side ren and whilst we did say that uh the bull is perhaps uh warner brothers becoming the better disney the flip side is that you could say and argue that their assets are shit and their balance sheet is shitter <laughs> <laughs> and that all depends on which side of the content fence you sit on um I mean, the balance sheet is pretty objective, so but let's, we'll get there. <laughs> let's, start with, let's start with the content because we did just spend 20 minutes talking about how good uh, a stable of assets and IP Warner Brothers has. But then when you compare it with some of their competitors, arguably, it might not be as strong. Yeah, I think this is a, this is a six of one, half a dozen of the other. Like, mm. there's so much debate about Marvel v DC. Yeah. Um, Pixar, I think, is pretty Outstanding. incredible but you put pixar up against harry potter 
Pixar probably just wins. Mickey Mouse against Game of Thrones, like who wins? Like either way, they're like incredible assets. Yeah. I think that's the point. Um, but are they as strong? Yeah. 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 Well, they certainly don't have the extension that we've just spoken about. So let's let's move to the. Oh, and I think the the reason we say that is you just want to invest in the best. Mm. Like over and over again, what we've learned in this world of investing is like you look at the mistake a lot of investors make is look at the second best and think if they can just become, it's going to come better the, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 like if they can just trade at the price to earnings ratio that the best trades at yeah i'll make money yeah but like the best <laughs> is the best, the best for a reason, for a reason. Yeah. they trade at the premium for a reason um anyway that's that's just something we sort of learned in so many industries over our few years of doing this so let's have a look at the balance sheet then ren because the transition from cable to streaming is absolutely killing uh warner brothers and and streaming across the board is hurting yeah a lot of companies yeah um it's it's a it's a cash cash black hole yeah yeah Yeah. And, and like you lose operating leverage as you transition out of cable because like cable high fixed cost low variable i mean like some variable cost but it's like the, the content, content cost is fixed and mm. then you spread it over more subscribers so you get more revenues. Uh, you have more eyeballs so you get more advertising revenue. As you lose those subscribers and those advertiser eyeballs, you lose that leverage that you had and if your content cost stays fixed, you lose more and more money mm. as people cut the cord. So it's, it's a really difficult transition to make but the alternative is you just withdraw completely. Yeah. You, then you're breaking contracts and you, there's probably cost there. But then you have to recoup it all on the subscription side. So like it's a really difficult transition to make. Mm. And at the same time, as you're making that transition, you're cannibalizing your cable business with your subscriber business. Mm. So it's difficult. I don't envy those executives at all. Well, uh, let's have a look at their cash position, Ren. $4 billion cash in the balance sheet, but gross debt of $53 billion. Heaps of debt. Heaps of debt. <laughs> <laughs> Paying uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in interest on that debt every year. Mm. So, $53 billion in debt, $4 billion in cash means they've got $49 billion net debt. Now, to put that in context, this company makes $10 billion in revenue a year and about a billion dollars in profit a year. So do the maths on paying off fifty billion dollars in debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, and the important thing to say is that the streaming industry is slowing. Like, yeah, yeah. people are it's just going to get harder and harder. People are cancelling subscriptions because it's too crowded, and the cost of debt is rising. Mm, so mm. Um, interest rates are going up. So. This is a dumpster fire waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, we did write that in the doc, didn't we? Now, remember, this is if you're making the bear yeah, case. If That's you're the kind the of thing case. you would say if yeah. you're making the bear case. Um, what you could see is a fire sale on some assets to free up cash to service the debt. Now, Gee. that's not great. No, you don't want to be doing that. That has happened before for in Warner Brothers history. Um they got acquired by AOL in like 1998 or 1999. You know what happened to AOL in like 2000, 2001? Bust. The tech bubble burst. Mm. Um, and so like they, I think they, they actually ended up just selling AOL for like a fraction of the valuation when the merger happened. Um, but you wouldn't want to see them have to like sell. No, it's just, it's just like basic personal finance. You don't want to sell assets to cover... Imagine if they had to sell Debt like repayments. Imagine if they had to sell HBO. Lord of the Thr- oh, well, yeah. Well, imagine <laughs> that. But like Lord of the Rings, yeah. the IP to that to Disney. Yeah. Or like DC Comics, you probably couldn't sell it to Disney, but you'd sell it to like Netflix. Yeah. Like it would just I mean, I'm, we're not saying that's going to happen, but like that's the risk of a highly levered company that they have to sell a prize asset at some point to cover that debt. So that's the downside. Now, Bryce, I want to put it in some context into some research that we found. So, Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, their net leverage is five, five Mm -hmm. times. Um, According to one media analyst we found, like an analyst of the media industry, they don't want to look at companies above three times. Uh, For comparison, Comcast is about two and a half times. Disney is about 2.2 times. So, they're more leveraged than... They've got more debt than their competitors, I think is the first thing. And, and we spoke about the one risk of debt, which is the risk of having to sell assets. Yeah. The other risk is 
can you keep up in the content arms race? Because there is a mm. content arms race. Mm. Amazon have spent $715 million on buying the rights and making, making the first season of the Rings of Power. Yeah. $715 million. This company has $4 billion on its balance sheet. Yeah. <laughs> For context, remember who you're playing against. Apple, mm. Google, and Amazon in the streaming wars now, as well as like Netflix and Disney. Cash City. Apple, Apple, Amazon, Google. I think all of them have like 50 billion plus cash on their balance sheet. Easy. Yeah. So that is the challenge. Can Warner Brothers keep up in the content arms race um, and service that debt? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, doesn't Apple have something like 200B or something on their balance sheet? Probably, yeah. yeah something yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, and that that really is a, a quite a compelling um, argument to add to a bull case, bear case. a bear case. Um, I'm actually not done. I've still got one more point. Oh, hit us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we've spoken about debt. We've, the, the quality of their assets, are they as good as Disney? The debt that we've spoken about. The final one is the difficulty in streaming. So, Streaming isn't profitable for basically anyone at the moment. Mm. Um, the company, uh, Warner Brothers, have said streaming will start to become profitable for them at 130 million global subscribers. They're at 90 yeah, million so now. 40 million more. Do you reckon that's doable? Well, I'm surprised at how some of these uh, streaming services have grown from zero to close to 100 pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but then others but, haven't, but, like but, Apple. Yeah, but yeah. others have sort of fallen. I think it's they've they've got the right they've got the right they're they're in a good position with the assets they've got. Yeah. But um, putting on another 40 million in this day and age, it's hard to tell. It's, it's tough. It's really hard yeah. to tell. The other thing to keep in mind is the company have said they're going to merge their streaming services. So HBO Max and Discovery Plus will become one with all of CNN's stuff in there as well. I don't know what the overlap between those two is, but there will be some overlap. Um, so they'll take a step back before they take a step forward. I reckon they'll get to 130 mil. I mean, if HBO Max was here in Australia, I feel like we'd both be signing up. No, like, I've got, got binge. Well, no, but binge would lose the content. They would yeah. lose the licensing deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I ran, I can't see um, 40 million is a lot. Uh, we- they added net two or net 1.7 last quarter I think so like that's something but it's something but like you've got like <clears throat> the time to get to 40 million versus the costs that are going to continue to increase to compete with everyone else who's sucking away those potential 40 million is only going to get more and more yeah so, so that's the bear case that's the bear case so yeah. bull v bear that's how you build it um, that's how that's a high level uh, then you get into the financials and, and all that stuff but that, yeah. that's not that's not easy to explain no over. no I'm moving to self C3 <laughs> <laughs> well we could do a, we could do a deep dive on management for example we could do a deeper dive on some of their competitors um, but this is just a uh, a high level starting point for how you could think about book building a bull and a bear sure if you have a bullet if you have a company that you'd like to uh get a high level go, starting get a point. high level starting point on a bull and a bear hit us up we'll give it our best uh, make sure you go and check out the dive where we've done plenty of content on streaming and also uh, most recently a deep dive on uh, house of dragon house of the dragon and power <laughs> Power of the ring. <laughs> rings of power. <laughs> and rings of power and uh, how much Amazon has spent yeah. on um, on making that TV show. It's phenomenal. And I think uh, one final thing, we have a whole stage at FinFest where the best investors in Australia will be pitching the thesis for their best investment. So if you want to learn more about building a thesis, there's no better place to do it than FinFest. That's it. Thanks to Stake for powering it. Thank you to Stake for powering FinFest, as well as our other major sponsors, Weno, CoinSpot, and Magellan. We cannot wait. There's only 32 days to go. 33 days to go. 32. Whatever. 15th of October. (laughs) 15th of October. (laughs) Ren, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting stocks as always, and uh, we'll be back next week. Sounds good. I will say this about investing. Everything you do, What I learned at 20 is you can.